Welcome to Pokemon Platinum. I am Fuzzluz and I figured I would replay this game because something has just been announced and I'm very excited about that. A remake of Diamond Pearl so I figured we'd just take a trip down memory lane and do a full playthrough of Platinum. Now Platinum along with Emerald are my two favorite games in the series so I'm really excited to play this one. And unlike my last Pokemon playthrough I did a... Uh, screen where I had all of my Pokemon team, I just decided to put the rats in here. Uh, no, we don't need any info given. I accidentally pressed on this. Okay, thank you for that very helpful, very helpful display of... Yes, I think we do understand everything. We'll just use the touch screen. No, that will be all. And I will. I think you can still see my mouse here, but oh well. The bottom screen in this game really isn't that. You don't really need to do a lot with it. Oh, the poke the poke etch is pretty useful. Okay, now for our name. So, I'm going to play as a girl, obviously, and. Of course, like in my last playthrough, I'm just going to keep a theme of making Fire Emblem characters my Pokemon names and my trainer name. So, for this trainer, um, I'm thinking of what blue-haired Fire Emblem girl we can use. Uh, I was thinking about Katria for a little bit, but then I decided to go with Lucina. Um, there is another reason why, but that won't be apparent until very, very end of the game. Well, we are doing post-game, near the end of the game at least. She kind of looks like Lucina, I guess. And now time to name Barry our rival. We can't name him from here. Nolan. <laughs> I just started playing Radiant Dawn, so it's actually really funny. And Roy's here as well. But, you know, as funny as it would be to name him Roy, um, he's not a redhead. I think we're going to have to name him after someone in the... Someone else in the Awakening world. I should probably be using the touch screen for this. Okay. Guess that is his name. And here we go into a chibi. Not really. Yeah, a lot of people are really torn about the chibi designs of the game. I, I really don't care. I hope they make the lighting a little bit better. And Professor Owen has returned to Sinnoh. Well, that's good for us. Because we'll have to get a Pokemon from him. Cool. Someone joked that um, the only change to the remake is she now has a Switch instead of a Wii. Yeah, maybe. You know, he kind of uh, does remind me of Owain a little bit. I feel like Owain would be a really, like, anxious, in a hurry Pokemon trainer. Ah, uh, yes, are we. And I don't think we have a potion in here. No, we just have some, some dialogue. Right, so first thing is first, we do need to make this fast, and I think we're going to go with frame number. I always like 17, but I think for this one we'll go with 14. Perfect. Now, if only we had the running shoes in this game. Generation 4 is where they first introduced running indoors. Really fun, really handy to do. And we can see our new text box here. Neat. Thanks, Mom. Like every other mother, she'll just sit there and watch TV the whole game. Although she does show up somewhere else a little bit later, if I remember. And here we can see Twinleaf Town is covered in snow. Yeah, one of the updates from Diamond and Pearl to this game is they added snow because it's supposed to be a cold region. Oh jeez, forgot something. Oh, let's just follow you in. I don't think you can actually obtain 10 million in this game. 
I think you have like one dollar short in Gen 5 of having 10 million. Yeah, not too much going on in Twin Leaf Town. Yeah, if only I had the running shoes. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's the whole point of the game, Barry. Scooting over to the next patch of grass is the play you normally want to do. To be fair, though, it's only Starly and Bidoof. Well, Bidoof is a god Pokemon, so maybe it is dangerous for us to go in the grass. You know, I wonder what happens here if you say no. Big boy O8 here. Keep wanting to call him Odin from Fates because, spoiler, they're the same character. And here comes Lucas, which is really interesting because Lucas is in, of course, um, Echoes, the Gaiden remake, so technically he's being a Fire Emblem character without me having to put in a name. Yeah, so the first episode here is, of course, going to be a lot of tutorials. Now, this choice, you can lose this battle pretty easily. I've, um, tested it out. So we have our three Pokemon. We have Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. So I'm going to go with, now this is a pretty easy decision for me. I think when this is remade, I'm going to go with my original choice. And here I'm going to do that as well. So we're going to go with Piplup. In the last game I played, we didn't get a choice because that was a hack where we had to start with Shinx. Speaking of which, Shinx and Starly are both uh, native to this game in this region, so I'll be seeing plenty of them, but I don't think I'll be using either of them since I did just use them in the last playthrough. They're also quite popular on Sinnoh Team, so I really don't want to use them. If you've seen my Fire Emblem playthroughs, I tend to go for the characters that aren't used as much. Same with Pokemon. Okay, let's hope we don't lose. And we have an animated trainer sprite, although I think that was in Diamond Pearl or Emerald, maybe? Alright. Um, so let's see, we have Pound and Growl, Growl, no access to a stab move yet. That would be a little bit too broken if Turtwig were to Razor Leaf us non-stop. Or Absorb. I think he is absorbed first in his grass move pool. This is where it can get really irritating. Turtle's just going to withdraw himself. I believe that it is classified as a water type move in this game, so a little weird if you pick Turtle and see a water move. No, you're not going to beat Chimchar with that. I don't know which is the easiest version of this battle. It it's probably Chimchar, maybe? I'm, I'm not really sure, but this one's kind of tough because Turtwig just likes to build up his defenses. We'll have to get either an Ice-type Pokémon or an Ice-type move later on because Tur or Turtwig, um, if you don't remember or if you haven't even played this game, he'll evolve into Torterra, which is Grass Ground. Which is actually really bad for Piplup, who will become Water Steel. And also kind of bad for Chimchar, who becomes Firefighting, the second Firefighting Pokémon in the large pool of them for starters. Well, only three. Embor would be the third until people started complaining, and Delphox would get the Fire Psych typing. Okay, maybe one more? Twelve, eight... Take about two more hits. Oof. Don't crit me. Okay, you have to kill him this time. Very exciting battle. Very, very thrilling. <laughs> it's usually a little more fun when you have time to train your starter beforehand like you can in Heart Gold Soul Silver. Yeah, so am I. 
I'm glad we were able to win that, though. I have lost that battle with that exact matchup, because I usually go for Piblup. So another thing with the layout, the, why I'm, the reason why I'm not doing it like I did last time is because it does take a lot of time. I just record as I change the layout, and I want to keep these episodes to about 30 minutes. The less I have to cut out, the closer I can see my recording time. Still getting used to how uh, to break up Pokemon videos, because obviously Fire Emblem videos, you break them up by chapter, but this game really doesn't have anything like that. It is nifty. Okay, I think we are... Let's see, we should be healed. What kind of Piplup do we have? Careful. I think that is a neutral... I don't know if this game is where they show the stat spread. They'll be highlighted in blue and red depending on what's the good one and the bad one. I, of course, do not have these memorized whatsoever, so I'm going to have to look that up. Right, so as Barry mentioned, we have to get our way to Sand Gem Town. But first, we're going to the lake. Lake Verity, I think it's called here. Lake, Ver lake Velour is the one by the hotel. Yeah, Verity. Alright, Barry. Whatever you say. And I am going to mistake and call him Barry because his default name. Okay, not creepy at all. Yes, let's just catch the legendary Pokemon as we just began our journey. Certainly, Mess Spirit will help um, take out the first couple of gyms, although I think we'll be all set for the first gym. Accent E balls. <laughs> Well, but I do like this music. So in Diamond and Pearl, that little spot of missing grass right there is where you could get the starter. He left the briefcase here. And we have our first wild Pokemon. Starly. Yeah, in the last game in Pokemon Eclipse, which I just finished, we used Star uh, Ingrid with Starly, so we're not going to use her this time. So Starly and Shinx fans... Um, the music still stays where it was. Starly and Shinx fans, I am sorry, but I just do not want to use them here because I do think they are quite overused in Sinnoh. Although I probably will use them in the remake because I do want to go for my original team, and they were on my original team with Piplup. So now we have our first long patch of grass, and I want to talk to him, but we have Starly again. Now, as far as using the speed up button, I don't have anything configured right now. I'll just see how it goes. Um, what are you saying? I know there's a shopkeeper around here somewhere. Well, that's kind of impossible. I don't know what you're thinking. Um, and you're the ledge guy. Thanks, guy. Would be very helpful to have that when we are fighting Barry. There he is, B Doof. <laughs> I might catch one just as an HM buddy for now. B Burrell, by the way, makes a really good one because he also has access to the water type moves. You're not gonna show me, that's fine. Here's another um, banger music track in this game. where we get to nickname our Pokemon. Oh, of course. Yes, I would. I don't remember where the name writer is in this game. Anyway, we have a bird Pokemon. He is male. Oh, let's see. Actually, let me just go ahead and move my mouse over here. T-I-B-A-R-N... Okay. We're going to name him after Tabarn, the best burb husbando in Tellius. Well, 
technically, Lucas, you don't really know me yet. Maybe I'm not. Just saying. Sure. I don't think you can get out of this text until you say yes. So we know how old the professor is. Okay. So I would like to get through these tutorials in the first episode, just so we can get to training in the next one. I may train Piplup up a little bit off screen, but I would like to so show some captures on screen as well. And of course we're going to get Starly um, just as a fly HM and then Bidoof, obviously. And I think you get two return TMs in this game. So if you like any normal type Pokemon in this game, um, good to invest one of these TMs into one of them. Um, TMs in this game in this generation are not reusable like they are in Gen 5, so you do have to be careful how you use them. But like I said, return is given to you twice here, so you don't really have to worry about conserving it as much. Okay, thank you, Lucas. Yeah, so we have to go all the way back. And we have a beach down here. I think there's an item down here as well. Um, there it is. Antidote. So if you're doing a Nuzlocke, that could be helpful because Pokemon do die of poisoning in this generation. And I think he is going... I don't know if it's mandatory we heal here, but I guess we'll just take it anyway. And the Pokemon Center in Gen 4. We have an upstairs for online communications, but we're not going to use that. So Nintendo did cut the communication for the original DS um, a few years ago. So even if you were playing this on um, your own console or your own DS, uh, you're not going to get to trade with anyone. I think it was shortly after Black White 2 came out, which was a shame because I really liked the Join Avenue feature. It was kind of like built around making friends online. So let's go speak to mom. And that was pointless to heal because she healed for us. Mm, we'll come back around maybe the sixth badge or so. I guess I don't have a choice. If you're Owain's mother, doesn't that make you Lisa? But then who does that make you? Are you Sumia? Olivia? The village maiden? In my playthrough, you're the village maiden. Oh, no, don't look at that. If you found this because you're a Pokemon fan, I do apologize for making a ton of Fire Emblem references you don't get. But Awakening is a pretty popular game. I hope everyone will at least be aware of it. That's mostly what I'm referencing. Okay, I don't think we have Pokeballs yet to catch anything. So we just have to skip through until we do Lucas's other tutorial. Now I think at night, um, Cricketot will also appear around these areas. Now, as far as the time of day I'm recording this, um, I would like to, oh my gosh, I would like to get most of it in the day, however, sometimes I may have time at night to record, um, so we may be playing at night for a little bit as well, but I did want to uh, get off to the first episode on, well, in daylight. We may see a few sunset episodes as well, I think it's at 7 or so it stays sunset out. Alright, I'm watching. So we have to do this tutorial. It is not optional in this game. Interestingly, show us the menu like this since we did kind of have to figure it out on our own battling Barry. 
And yeah, Lucas will get the starter that is weak to you. You don't see it too, too much. I think there's one other point where it comes out. There will be a double battle in a little bit um, after we beat the first gym. This generation only gives us 5. I think newer ones give you about 10. There might even be a newer game that gives you 20. I'm not really sure. I didn't really pay too much attention in uh, Sword and Shield. Let's go back to... Well, first we should do some exploring around this town. I think this is Lucas's house. And I think his sister has something to do with Pokemon in the post-game. Different Pokemon from, I think, Johto and Hoenn will appear... Once you beat the game, she'll see a news report on TV, and then in that area, on that route, a rare Pokemon will appear. So a good way to fill out the Pokedex if you did not have access to a Gen 3 game. Um, this game, of course, you can backtrack. There's a little area south of this town that you can move up Gen 3 Pokemon from a cartridge. Although it did require an old-style DS that had both the GBA port and, of course, the DS port. I think unlike the DSi, it lost that capability. Right, so not much going on in this town. Um, starter towns are usually not too much with items, but let's see if we can actually catch a Pokemon like Lucas showed us, and then I think we'll call it an episode. Okay, perfect. And now as far as nicknames go, I don't think I'm going to nickname the HM buddies. I did nickname the Zigzagoon last time, Hanuman, but I think we'll just... We'll just keep them as is, because they're not going to be on the team permanently. Now, as far as a flying Pokemon, I don't believe we get fly until after the third gym. Or, no, it's the fourth gym in this game. Now, as to whether I'll have a Pokemon that can fly yet, I don't know. Um, alright, comparing it to Rachat, of course, it's Gen 1 counterpart, and we'll just leave you as Bidoof. Let's see if we can find Starly. Male Bidoof. So this game also introduces gender differences. Some of them are only noticeable on the front sprite, some on the back. Bidoof has an extra little floof to his tail if he's male, which um, some people do joke that it is something else. Alright, well I think what I'm going to do here is just train up Piplup a bit and maybe find a Starly off screen to catch, unless you're a Star. Nope, another Bidoof. So I will leave you at that. I hope you enjoyed this very first kind of boring episode with tutorials and a forced battle, but hopefully next time we'll be able to get things going. I will see you then.